Hello, I'm Nancy Kaminsky, and today we're going to paint a street scene. We must have very good grids and do them very carefully. Because after all, we don't want our buildings leaning, although I'm noted for uh, leaning buildings. They say it's an original Kaminsky if all the buildings lean. So be very, very careful. Like that. There we are. This is a rainy day, by the way. This is, again, something new, something, and very interesting, because I think that most people like to paint, well, rain or snow or what have you. I certainly do. It's a very exciting painting. Now, we're going to put in our buildings. I purposely kept the buildings straight across instead of having the buildings in perspective. I had the street in perspective. So we're going to do it this way. The buildings actually fit into these two squares like this. And each section is a building. Isn't that marvelous? There, like this. You see? I've planned it so that it's much easier for drawing. I want to clean that up. Just let me clean that up for just a moment because it's getting a little sloppy. Fine. Now we're going to put in our, these are the buildings like this. Each one is a building. It's a row of houses, by the way. And these are the roofs like that. Vary them just a little, like this. Like that. Now, they are the, we're not going to paint all the windows and things in. We're going to do that when we put the color on, so I don't want to take the time to do it now. They're, they. Uh, take a little time and I would just as soon save it for the color. Well, I'll do a couple just to give you an idea and the door just like that. That's all I'm going to give you. Now the next thing we do, put the sidewalk in right in front of the buildings and we're going to put in the street. This is a very interesting thing. The perspective of the street creates the depth in the painting. So we're going to put a line here and one here and then we're going to bring this out to here, put a little dot there, and bring the street out like that. We have another, another uh, street, actually a pavement on the other side, and it comes this way. Put your little dot so you know where you're going, and bring it out like that. You see you're already going up into the buildings and onto this other street like that. Now we do have curbs like this. Now be very careful about the, the um, slope of the street. There we are. Now we have our, I'm not going to uh, fuss too much with the buildings. I will put in a couple of chimney pots just to give you an idea of what's happening. Fine. Now this, this uh, street scene has two railings with trees and shrubs like this. It goes up like that, this way. Then on this side also, be sure that the railing goes above the street line like this. And there again, we will put the railings in very loosely for now, like this. Now we're introducing again another first, a figure in the painting. Now this may do you in, but it's very impressionistic. That would save you some. But nonetheless, you will be able to do it if you do it very loosely, uh, the way I tell you and the way I show you. So as long as it looks human, I'm happy with it. There we are. Now, we have little things like railings here in front of the windows and what have you, but I won't do those for now because, as I say, they do take time, and we'll do them in a moment. Slant the roofs like this. 
Now we have two beautiful trees on either side. This also is very good for the composition and it creates interest on both sides of the painting. Now we always just really leave the trunks in, but I will put in a few branches just to give you an idea of what's happening. Very large trunks like that. Then we have another tree that comes out this way, like that. over there. This again we can do when we're painting. There. Now we must do the figure. The figure we put in Matilda right here like this. Please keep it simple. I don't want you worrying about hats and you know check skirts and what have you just have a nice little woman walking in the rain with her umbrella and don't get too involved or too you know well, I would like her skirt blowing a little bit like that I have to give her the new look the new long skirts and be sure she's not leaning or falling over I think she's a little short, so I'll make her a little taller by adding some more at the top. We can change that in the painting. I think we've lost her head, but we'll find it. As long as I don't lose mine, we're in business. Fine, now let's put the umbrella. Actually, I will add the umbrella last because we have a problem here with the house, and I've told you many times that actually it's best to wait and add do the rest in the painting. Well, I could draw it in just to make it happy so you can see it, but anyway, there it is. We have a lamppost over here, like this. There again, I will develop this in the painting and not in the drawing. Now, it's very important that we put in our shadows now. Now, let's leave her for just a moment. The most important thing is to decide where the light is coming from, and we must shade this very, very carefully because we have to create a wet street, and that's quite a little something to do. The light is coming from the right, so we're going to shade the left side of the houses, like this, and under the roofs, like that. Don't forget, we have a shadow under the roofs because they do extend out beyond the wall of the house, which creates a shadow. These are your rooftops, like this, and so on. Oh, I feel better with the windows. I'm going to darken the trees, like that. Now, we have here, I want to darken that so you can see that. I'm, I'm there we are. We have a reflection of the tree into the street like this. And we have one here, like this. And a little, two of them here. We have one under the woman, like this. And underneath the edge of this building, or rather the fence, like this underneath this tree like this you see already we're getting a wet feeling like that and it's a little darker in front but not much like that now this is very simple but I don't want to do too much because as I say we're going to do it with paint but be sure now we have a lovely shadow right here by the sidewalk and it goes like this along the curb, like that. I think that actually, let's leave that and, and start with color because I don't want to do too much. Let's leave it for the moment, like that. Be sure that you get your buildings in, that they are straight. They look like condemned houses. <laughs> there. Fine, there we are. Now we've got the drawing in, 
and we've got the shading in and remember to keep these, these shadows in mind as you paint because if you don't then you're in trouble and it's not a wet street. Fine, now we start with the sky and we start with the dark and, and medium tone at the top, the light tone, the very top of the buildings like this. Out go the trees as usual. This is the medium tone. And then some light tone. I have a tendency to paint my skies from right to left. I should vary that, I guess. It just seems easier. Now, let's do the, put the light tone and the extra light tone. I mentioned previously that we do have other tones. This is a lovely light tone and it creates a marvelous feeling in the sky. Even though it's a rainy day, there is a light at the horizon. When you're out or traveling about or driving, notice the sky and you will know exactly what I'm saying. This is the lovely thing about painting. You will see a lot of things that you never saw before and you will find that, that uh, everything I'm telling you is valid. Of course, admittedly, I'm, I'm simplifying it for you until you learn, so this is not the end, it's just a means to an end. I'm going to add a couple of dark tones to give it a kind of a stormy feeling like this. After all, it is raining. There we are. Now, let's go to the buildings. Now we have to work in the shape of the rooftops like this. I think uh, I forgot. Uh, no, I didn't forget, actually. I just ran the sky into it. Like that. And do all of the rooftops like this. I'm sure when they were built, that's the way they built them. Since they are row houses, they probably mass produced them. And we're going to outline them in purple for emphasis. Also to separate them. That's a cagey way of getting you off the hook, but it works very well. Leave it for the moment. Now pick up our purple and outline the roofs like this. All the way through, like that. We can add the chimneys a little later. I would like to add a little bit of purple just on the edges to give it a little interest. Like so. Fine. Now, let's go to the houses. Start on the left. I've added a little orange to this tone. And incidentally, this is what is known as a monochromatic painting. It's all shades of the same color. It's a very interesting technique and a little different again. So we have a lot of firsts in this painting. I don't want to lose Matilda there because she might be... I may have to put her back in at a time when I, I need to have the time. There we are. We work from dark to light. Don't worry about the tree. That's an old refrain, I think, by now. Then we go to the middle tone, which is quite green. I think you're going to be a little upset because it's green, but when it's finished, you'll see how lovely it looks and how interesting it is. I do not like to paint the, the traditional or the, con the uh, popular conception of a gray picture because it's a gray day. I'll work this out a little bit, I guess that's a little more interesting. The middle tone over here. Don't worry about the trees. We've got the lower trunk, so we're not lost. Then we work the light tone on the side like this.
a little purple in between, like that. The light tone. Also, we're going to add another lovely tone. It has a bit of blue in it to give the painting a little interest because it's began, it can become too monotonous to use the same tone without little touches of other colors. So we're going to create a little interest by adding another tone, a, a tint of another tone. And that tone is a lovely blue shade like this, which gives it a very interesting look. Fine. There we are. Now we have the outline of the buildings. Let's put in our sidewalk so we don't lose it. Like that. I'm afraid I've lost my little friend. I'll just the umbrella. A little purple in between. Now, the thing we're going to do next are the windows and the doors. I think it would be uh, much easier if you drew little lines like this for you so you know where your windows go and you can line them up that way. So just take your knife, scratch in about where you want them. There's two down here in the doorway and so on. Like that. There we go. We take purple and when we put this window in, this is a very interesting technique, we simply go on one side like this with the purple and then we take it and just outline the other side. Please do not get the windows too large like that. Very simple. Please no curtains or shades or what have you. Like that. And we have a nice doorway. And don't worry about it. We can put little goodies on it. We have a lovely little railing which will ease, will change that a little bit and give it a little interest. But for now, that's what we'll do. And you see those windows went very fast. And that's the way it should be. They should be just impressions of windows. You can add little lines like that. Like this. And the doorway. It does have a door, you know. And I think these people haven't taken very good care of their house. There we are. Let's get the doorway in. Let me go over here. Put little lines at the bottom to square it up a little bit anyway, so it doesn't look quite so like a hurry up window. Because the thing I really want you to learn is how to do reflections of in rain. And that's lovely and important. Now we have one more set of windows. Like that. On the side there, we have a nice doorway. Uh, please don't get impatient. Try to do not a, uh, uh, you know, a fussy job, but do try to keep your windows lined up. I mean, this. Um, I forget the doorway on the right. I almost forgot this doorway. Fine. I think at this point I'm going to put in the chimney because I may not get to them, and so I'm going to do that right away. Very simply because the tree trunks will, uh, the tree branches will cover most of the windows. There we are. Now let's do the sidewalk. There's one here, you know, like that. Oh, I've got to go through her poor little head. And I will. I better bring that down like that and start fresh. Let's darken that sidewalk a little bit to line it up, and then we'll put a highlight on it in a moment. Get it on, fine. Now let's go to the left of the painting. We're going to start with the highlights. The top part of the street is very light because it's, there's a reflection. So we go very light, light, medium, and dark this way. 
When we put our strokes on, we use our marvelous water stroke that we use when we paint sea or lakes or what have you. It's a, our old reliable stroke and it is absolutely wonderful for, for something like this. Of course, you're probably thinking that your, your street will look like a lake. You have a street here. And and we go to the dark tone down here. And the extra dark tone like this. Like that. And the street goes around that way. Like this. Put your shadows in, like this, east and west, like that. Extra dark tone. Put some purple, like this. I'm going to put the fences in, which we just scratch in like that. I've got to put the trees in. There again, keep them simple. With purple, as usual. I want to get Matilda in before because it could be that she will have gone in one of the houses. That might be one solution. <laughs> Wouldn't be nearly as much fun. We have a tree right here. This. I'm going to put in our figure. I've got to get the umbrella in. And we're just about finished this painting. Put the 
the lamp. Now I'll put the highlights into the that. and our little railings. Which we will scratch in like that. Don't get them too wide. Just to give it a little interest. on the highlights there and the shadows a little more so that you have a very good strong reflection. Work a few strokes downward like this just as we do in the water. There we are for today. Now for the signature. Goodbye for now.